In this video we're going to look at realistic conflict theory. Now this is an alternative explanation for prejudice apart from social identity theory. Now this was made by Sheriff in 1966. I'm sure you've heard of Sheriff. He's one of your key studies in the social approach for prejudice with the Robbers Cave experiment. Sheriff suggested that intergroup conflict or prejudice results as a consequence of conflict between groups so whereas social identity theory says that prejudice occurs from the mere presence of group realistic conflict theory suggests that there must be some sort of competition or conflict between groups for prejudice to arise for example if two groups want to achieve the same goal but they can't have it then hostility is produced between them for example where there is limited resources this can lead to conflict as the two groups are competing over the limited resources once this hostility has been aroused, it's very difficult to return to the normal relations and an ongoing feud can arise between the two groups. We call realistic conflict theory a realist theory because it proposes that conflict between the groups isn't based on something irrational but an actual need for resources. And it's a conflict theory because it rejects this idea that groups can share and cooperate. Realistic conflict theory suggests that it's the conflict between groups that's important that leads to the prejudice. So it's recognised that people identify as their group. It accepts this idea of having an in-group and an out-group and us having negative views about the out-group. But why do some out-groups attract hostility and discrimination and others don't? For example, the British have some negative stereotypes about the French, such as eating frogs, and the Germans having no sense of humour. But we don't have these against the Dutch or the Danes. And this is what realistic conflict theory tries to explain. Realistic conflict theory states that whenever there are two, more, two or more groups that are seeking the same limited resources, this will lead to the conflict, the negative stereotypes and the belief, and then the discrimination will result as a consequence of this. The conflict can lead to increasing animosity toward the group and can cause an ongoing feud to develop. Now we looked at, in the case of Britain, France and Germany, these are all European countries that used to compete for imperial colonies and still compete for power within Europe. There are so many colonies or European jobs or money to go around, so these are limited resources. Countries like the Netherlands and Denmark have never competed with us for power, control or wealth, so we don't have negative stereotypes against them. When you're evaluating realistic conflict theory, I again suggest that you use SCOUT, so you refer to supporting evidence, conflict in evidence, other explanations, usefulness and testability. Anybody that I teach, I very much refer you back to the booklet that I gave you, uh, which has got all the information and detailed about this, how realistic conflict theory can be applied, how it can be kept compared with social identity theory. Anybody that I don't teach or actually has no idea who I am, there is a link to the website that I uh, publish on, which you can get the information from on there. Now, in terms of strengths of realistic conflict theory, there is a lot of research to support it, particularly Sherry's own study of the robber's cave. Um, and there's also a lot of attitude surveys, like the Michigan National Election Studies. And it's backed up by common sense as well, let's be honest. It's got face validity. Football fans will have negative stereotypes against rival teams who they compete against over a competition or the FA Cup or anything like that. Extremists who try to whip up prejudice often claim that outgroups represent a threat to people's jobs, education, money or privileges. Think about the refugee crisis at the moment on the news. The news are saying, or the implication is there that they're coming here, they're going to take our resources, they're going to take our money or sit on UK benefits and therefore that's reduced, or, sorry, that's led to a prejudice against them. However, the Robbers Cave, which is a separate video on my channel, was actually an American study, and it was on schoolboys and not adults. Now, there are a number of faction, uh, factors that could explain prejudice relating to schoolboys, such as testosterone or upbringing. The boys might be particularly competitive, more so than anybody else. So it's really difficult to generalise from these studies to the adult population or the rest of the population. Attitude surveys also suffer from a chicken and an egg parody, where... What comes first, the prejudice or the perception of the competition? Bigoted people often create the idea of competition to justify their prejudice, so the prejudice will come first and then they'll try and explain the prejudice afterwards.